For a long time, we've heard of China rising and China doing different things in Africa. And uh, we thought we should bring some of the leaders of China together, the scholars and people involved with uh, Africa together, and Ghanaians, so we can really learn and exchange ideas about Ghana and China. But for me, it was basically to learn more what has made them so successful within a very short period of time. We have managed to found a developmental path in line with country's national realities. And we have achieved the great progress to the amazement of the world. In fact, it's also to the amazement of myself. If China can do this in a short span of time, why Africa cannot do it? Africa has three times the land mass of the Chinese one. When you talk about achievements, it's not a propaganda. It's something you see with your own eyes. It's touchable and it's visible. You need to have a very strong unified leadership. You need the peace and stability. You need a concentration of minds on development. If you talk about multi-party democracy, running for the presidency, spend awful lot of time on it, you don't have the time for production. I'm not saying that uh, each and every African country should follow China's model. No, China's model is only good for China. You have to find your own models to develop yourself. Africa should think about institutions in looking at the Chinese model. We probably should note the first development because these are the institutions that support. If you go to China and you want to borrow, the road is to CDB, the road is to Elzimba, the road is not to the Ministry of Finance. The importance of commercial projects paying for themselves is very, very important to Africa. Africa has mostly done business with the West, you know, but China offers a, a new opportunity for Africa. We remain behind the rest of the world in almost every facet of uh, development. You can talk about human development, infrastructure, social amenities. We are in this situation despite the fact that we sit on vast amounts of natural resources. And then also, we've been receiving Western aid for over half a century, but we are still in this situation. It's obvious that we, we must find a new way of doing things, we must find a new approach to development. What kind of government do we want? What kind of system should we develop? What China has done is no secret. It's the same formula other East Asian countries have adopted over the years. What kind of economic system do we want to use in order to develop? That's our question. What kind of institutions should we have? I think when we settle on the model for development, that will lead us to the type of institutions we should have. We can develop our own models. We don't have to copy what has been handed down to us. This is the beginning of an exploration of how we can develop our own political systems and economic models. And we look forward to developing a program together. The Chinese uh, shared their views with us, their own understanding of Africa and what Africa needs. And then we also learned quite a bit about what institutions they have set up to help them do what they do. We also got an insight about what their motivations are. And I think in crafting local policy, we have to uh, inject the kind of insights we got today into our own local policies to know exactly how to uh, negotiate properly and how to work with them.